But I went to the ER the next day. If you've been injured in an accident, never sign anything or accept a check until you speak with an attorney. Remember, when something goes wrong, call Ann Fong. Meet the future. A chef, a designer, and ooh, an engineer. All learning to save and spend their money with Chase. The chef's cooking up first with her new debit card. Hungry? Uh-huh. The designer's eyeing sequins, uh, no, plaid. While mom is eyeing his spending. Nice. And the engineer? She's taking control with her own account for college. Three futures, all with Chase. Freedom for kids, control for parents, one bank for both. Chase, make more of what's yours. Downtown clearing out very nicely, as many areas are. Just a little bit of a uh, high-level cloud. And uh, temperatures will be gradually warming up by the time we get into the weekend. Today, still a little on the chilly side, even though we don't have as much cloud hanging in. Beach shots starting to clear out, too. Things are in pretty good shape. Coastal, a high of only 62 degrees, 65 in downtown Los Angeles. San Fernando Valley shooting for about 68 degrees. Same story in the high desert, Inland Empire. And Orange County, one degree cooler with a daytime high of 67 degrees. Ginger and traffic. Mm, yes, and you know what? We do have the situation that continues. For that 91 freeway, you know, the westbound side right about Downey Avenue, kind of a busy spot anyway. Then you throw a wreck into the mix where they're actually calling for the ambulance to get to the scene and a tow truck. So this is really only going to be an even tougher ride than it already is in both directions. We talk about sometimes that you can take, say, even Artesia Boulevard for a bit to help you get around some of the delays that are here. Alondra is another option for some people. Just all depends on where you're going, right? Moving over to look at the 5 South before you get to the 118 split. Southbound side is the tough spot. Then you got this crash. It's two cars. It's in the left lanes. Uh, you know what's going to happen. You're going to ride those brakes here, and it looks like you're going to stay on those brakes as you continue farther to the south and in towards areas of, say, the Elysian Valley even. I'll take you all the way down there to say that's where those delays continue. We'll watch and keep track of all these things that are popping up for your ride fairly active on this Wednesday. I'll send it over to you guys. Rallies and other events that are scheduled around town today for Armenian Genocide Remembrance Day. Schools in Los Angeles and Glendale are also closed in observance. KTLA's Alina Bovian live now in Hollywood with more. Alina, good morning. Jess, good morning. That's right, about half a million Armenian Americans in L.A. County. So this is a big deal and a big day for a lot of people. There will be a rally here and a march here in Hollywood coming up at 10 this morning. Hollywood and Western, Hollywood and Hobart, that's where we are. Slowly we're starting to see people gather. But to talk more about what's happening today, why this is so important, why it's so relevant, I want to bring in Edward Bursumian. He is a communications director for the ANCA. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Of course. So tell us about why this is so important to people here in Los Angeles, the Armenian American community. We see them coming out every year to march and to protest. And Armenians around the world, really, descendants of survivors of the genocide. What's their message? Absolutely. Uh, first off, uh, the first message is, of course, a genocide denied is a genocide repeated, as evidenced by so many genocides and holocausts that took place inspired by the actions that were committed against the Armenians in 1915. Uh, the main message now is that we don't just want recognition and justice for the Armenian genocide of 1915, but we also want genocide, right of return, and accountability for Azerbaijan's genocide of the Republic of Artsakh. How do you tie the two events together? What happened starting in 2020 with the Artsakh War and also what happened in 1915 for an audience that's really not familiar about this sort of um, incident that happened to the Armenian people? Absolutely. Uh, I think it's very important to understand that the first stage of a genocide is to create and identify outgroups and uh, point out that those outgroups are, quote unquote, the source of all social ills in a country. Uh, while obviously the Ottoman Empire uh, created this concept that the Armenians are the source of uh, preventing any progress in the Turkish uh, state, what we saw in Azerbaijan has been a long standing, I mean, decades long campaign to radicalize its population and incite ethnic hatred towards Armenians, which finally came to fruition as seen in the unprovoked attacks in 2020, uh, the illegal blockade uh, in 2022, and of course the September 19th full-scale invasion that led to several uh, dozens, hundreds of uh, civilian casualties and the forceful displacement of more than 150,000 Armenians of Artsakh who are indigenous to the region. And what is the connection between the Azerbaijani government and the Turkish government and their perception of Armenians? And why is that so important to people who are protesting today? 
I think that's a great question. Um, one of the most important things to note is that the interstate relations between Turkey and Azerbaijan is the doctrine of two nations, one people. Both countries work together very closely uh, as uh, guided by this ideology of pan-Turkism and the geopolitical objective here is that Armenia is perceived as the uh, geopolitical roadblock to economic and regional uh, dominance and so if for example Turkey and Azerbaijan can work together to wipe Armenia off the map uh, they believe that uh, it will lead to unseen uh, unfor unfortold uh, progress and um, prosperity in the region. But of course, that takes place as a result of a process of genocide, and we can't stand for that. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate your thoughts. Now, I do want to point out there will be another march happening today at noon. This will be on Wilshire in front of the Turkish consulate. Also, there will be a day of remembrance ceremony happening at 4.30 today at Glendale City Hall if you'd like to attend that. And take a look at this. If you want to learn more about Armenians and our culture and our history, we do have an Armenian History Month special that will be airing this Friday at 2.30. The reason why we do this is because in 2017, the L.A. County Board of Supervisors dedicated April as Armenian History Month so that we can learn more about one another and of course appreciate our differences and acknowledge the Armenian Americans within our community today making a difference. That is the very latest. I'm Lena Berman reporting live in Hollywood this morning. We'll send it back to the studio. Oh.